Now, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. This is our discussions event where we come, we invite a bunch of business owners, we invite uh, expert panelists, and we come and we sit around and we talk about uh, different topics that affect your business. We talk about digital marketing, marketing and other things that you affect your business. Mic. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> all right. I'll be good back there. All right. But first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I definitely want to thank our drink sponsor, Rock Drinks, for being here. This is the number one rated bartending service in the Southeast region. And that's Florida, that's Tennessee, that's Alabama, that's Georgia, and I think South Carolina. Are we in South Carolina now? Almost in South Carolina. So we definitely want to thank him for coming out tonight. I see a lot of people. I'm not going to name names because I don't want to mess it up. But uh, tonight we're going to have an interesting discussion. Tonight we're going to talk about the future. And the future looks very, very bright, especially for, for marketing, for digital marketing, and a lot of things that we're going to be able to do. So tonight we're going to be talking about location marketing. What is location marketing? And how can I use that location marketing to help my business? Sound like a good, a good discussion? So first, I want to, uh, you got something to say? No, you said it not. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all had to I get a little nervous when we start doing this. Maybe I need to go grab one of them drinks. But <laughs> uh, first, I, got, I, I have to introduce our host for tonight. Now, I've been an entrepreneur actually making money, <laughs> uh, working for myself. I've been an entrepreneur now for about 10 years. Now, 10 years ago, I was scared. I was nervous. I had just lost my job. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I wanted to work for myself. I was tired of working for other people and helping build their businesses when I knew I could do it for myself. So I went to the Urban League. And at the Urban League, I met Mr. Mark Parham. And I sat there in that class. I was nervous. I was scared. But Mark Parham, he helped me to kind of take an idea that was in my head and bring it to what you guys see today. So I am very happy and very, very honored to have him as our host for our discussions tonight, Mr. Mark Parham. I think I, I, I've induced him so many times tonight, I, I, I'm sure all y'all know, he is the director of entrepreneurship <laughs> at the Urban League, and he's also the host of a nasty syndicated uh, radio talk show called The Cap Builders Talk. All right? All right. So we're going to introduce up our, our panel guest tonight, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Happy New Year. Turn to your neighbor and say Happy New Year. <laughs> you know, uh, right now, there's a lot going on. A lot of good stuff, a lot of stuff we call not so good. How many of you think you're really affected by what's going on with the government shutdown right now? You're directly affected. So in the midst of chaos, okay, there's opportunity sometimes, okay? Right now I've been getting a lot of calls from people wanting to start a business because they're going, you know what, this is working for the federal government. A lot of businesses are being affected that are not federal government working for the federal government, but they provide services to the federal government. So like right now, a lot of people are trying to start businesses, but they're trying to figure out, how do I market that business? So right now, everybody's like, I'm going to do a Facebook Live post. Tell everybody what I do. They're, they're, they're using digital marketing and digital media because they want to grow their businesses. How many people right now are actually using digital media to market their business? How many people right now are using digital media to market their business and it's monetized digital media? You're actually making money with it. Okay, how many of you are using a strategy or are you just kind of putting it out there? All right. Tell us, you know, before we start the panel, I like trying to have some discussion about what are some of the issues that you're faced with in using digital media right now? Anybody? Question. Hmm? Right now, um, my name is Dominique Cuff. I'm from Atlanta Southwest. Right now, Facebook has changed the rules of the game to where I remember back in the day, $15, $20 would get you a lot of bang for your buck. But now, because so many more businesses are on there, you're looking at what you took $20 to spend, you're looking at going up to a $50 ad spend, which pretty soon is going up to 100 And we had a digital media marketer told us years ago, take advantage of these while the prices are low, because once the prices go up, a lot of people won't get priced out. He's called the gentrification of Facebook because Facebook wants higher dollar businesses on their website. So that's the main thing we're, we're seeing where we're having to make sure we're being super competitive on that website now. Anybody else? Any other problems? Well, 
rest of y'all know this, so you should be on the panel. <laughs> no, nobody's having any other issues. I'm Catherine Bird, also with uh, Atlanta Southwest, and it's um, filtering through the minutia of people that just, I'm a realtor, um, that's what I do, so it's, oh, I want to buy a house, I want to buy a house, or I want to rent a house, but they don't really know the process, so it's just sort of filtering through the, the to get to the people that I can really help and, 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 and assist, so. There's so much noise out there right now, how do you cut through the noise as a, as a company? Well, I know you're going to have some more questions. So I'm going to bring up the expert on it right now. He's he loaded into his phone right now. He got, he got a new hat on today, too. <laughs> <laughs> Jose Marquez, he's the president and CEO of techlatino.org. Well, welcome to this. I'm taking the hat off. But I'm always branding, man. Okay, okay. Branding. so uh, let, him, you, let him sit here. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. That sounds like a plan. But the women, but there are women here that understand social media. This is a discussion. This is not just a presentation. When he says discussion, we really want it to be a discussion because that's the only way we're going to learn, share from each other. You know, I had a great conversation earlier with this young man back here. He said he's not an expert, but he had a lot of knowledge to share. All right, but he does. We've all had our different experiences with digital marketing or entrepreneurship, so it's time to share, and that's what. I think they entitle this thing discussions. I do a lot of speaking, you know, a lot of times it's just me talking to the audience, but I like this setting. Sometimes you worry about how many people are in the room. It's never the quantity, it's the quality of the people. It's gonna be the quality of this discussion we're gonna have this evening. So everybody can leave here knowing a little bit more than when they walked in. So we together on that? Okay. We're not a woman out there, all right? <laughs> Now you can come sit up here if you, you just put the chair up here, you just won't be in there. <laughs> 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 you know what? Well, based on what you're trying to do. <laughs> right. Right, okay, so but the the fact is is that with what you're trying to do soon to be, digital marketing is gonna be a very important issue for you. All right. So the first thing I generally like to do is with my guests here, I want you to introduce yourself and talk about what you do, and then we'll get into having a discussion about digital marketing, the importance of, I, I told them earlier, the transition from digital marketing is new. So we're gonna talk about old school, the way we used to do it. Somebody give me a used to do way. How do we used to market? What about that yellow pages? <laughs> okay, hey, can't let me go forward with her. <laughs> okay, but, Everything new is built on old philosophy, so we just have to figure out how do we make the move from old methods to new. So anyways, oh. you have the mic. Well, um, I'm Jose Marquez. I'm the national president of Latinos in Information Sciences and Technology. But that's a mouthful, so I figured if you call me Tech Latino, I won't, I won't hurt it. It won't hurt. Anyway, um, we do a lot of the training uh, when it comes to coding and uh, cybersecurity, which is a big, big deal for us right now, um, and make sure that our next generation is prepared for those opportunities that are coming our way. That's the most important thing that we have to do is, you know, we're already at that age that we need to make sure that that next generation is getting the skill sets that we have because we, we were, my generation was, pretty much one of those generations that had a lot of things going for themselves. They had parents that were there, they had teachers that really taught, but now the next generation doesn't have that. So it really does take a village for us to do, the, you know, to do that, you know, to make sure that more of us are taking over those opportunities because there's a lot of opportunities. When I left corporate America, I made sure there was a Latino and an African American because I'm both. Right? So I made sure that there was a Latino there, and I made sure there was an African-American when I left corporate America, so that, that way they got that next generation too. So we always got to look out for that next gen. So that's what we do. That's uh, what our organization does. You know, they say I'm an expert. I'm just, you know, not an expert at all. I've just been lucky to be at the right place at the right time. Sometimes that's all it's about, being at the right place at the right time. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate you. I'll send you the check later. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's me. So 
we're going to start the conversation now. I'm going to ask you a question about old school marketing. You know how we make it to new school. I don't know if we can ask any young boys. No, no, no. Yeah, we need to ask them. So you, uh, so Willie, we'll let him. You describe old school. Tell us, tell us, tell us old school marketing. Well, basically, uh, nowadays. We have all this stuff. We have the world at our fingertips. We really do. Everybody sitting here, you've got a supercomputer in your pocket. It used to be it took a whole room to house a computer with one gigabyte worth of space. And now you've got all this information and you've got all this technology right here at your fingertips. But how are we actually using it? Are we using it to help promote our businesses? Are we using it to help promote what we're doing and help sell our own brands and, and really promote our own story and our own narrative? And that's really what it's about. As far as old school marketing, I remember the yellow pages. Uh, <laughs> I remember we used to get this big book. I never went through it. But uh, nowadays, it, it, it's more so about the mobile device, and that's what we're here to talk about tonight, how we target this mobile device and how we get the, the most bang for our buck on social media. I remember uh, Mr. Huff right here was talking about, you know, he's seen the, the price of Facebook raise uh, over the past couple of years, and it's because Facebook is effective. And now they're starting to see what their own value looks like, and it's still cheap, honestly. Uh, 50 bucks to get in front of almost, what, 5,000 people? You, I mean, you, you really can't beat that. You can't. You ain't going to get that on TV. You won't get it in a newspaper. You definitely won't get it anywhere else. So, I, 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 like I say, as far as old school, I don't know about that part. <laughs> but uh, definitely, let's talk about the mobile device. Let's talk about it now. Well, yeah, definitely old school technologies. We, I mean, we're living in it right now. People still want to do radio. They want to do TV. They want to do newspaper. And the th only thing is about how do you how do you guarantee that reach? How many times are people gonna? How many times do you look at ads on in a newspaper? When the last time you actually bought a newspaper? What about TV? How many times? How many people actually go home and watch TV without being DVR? And you just fast forward through your, those commercials. So the, these these old mediums are so pricey, and then you're not really getting a, a full return on your investment. And just like Kevin said. These, these big companies are starting to re realize that. And so they're starting to come to the Facebooks, to, to the Instagrams, to the Twitters of the world. Just like um, Facebook, I mean, not Facebook, but Super Bowl is going to be here in Atlanta. How much is, yeah, exactly. Clap for that. I mean, almost half a billion dollars is going to be spent in this city between Monday and, and on um, Sunday. So, and just a price to, or, you know, a commercial on, doing this game, doing a Super Bowl, is just astronomical. Would you rather spend your money on the Super Bowl or would you rather spend that amount of money doing advertising on Twitter, where people are gonna be tweeting during the game? So this is what we're here to talk about today. So a lot of people have used, are using uh, social media right now, and I still say, that we need to use social media, but we also need to use certain kinds of different medias as well. TV is still very, very viable because everybody's still watching a little TV. Right. Because remember, you don't want to, you don't want to edge out the old people, because people like me, I still watch TV. You know, people that are, you know, 60 years old, they still read newspapers. But you got to have a combination. You have to have a strategy where that whole strategy is reaching every age group and you're not circling anybody out. That's, that's one of the things that I, I wanted to talk about. No, uh, but I think it's important because a lot of times right now people are thinking of business. And so when people come to you and talk about the wealth in a... When people come to you and they talk about developing a strategy, what are some of the questions that you ask? How do you start directing and leading them down the right path? Well, the first question, the first question that I'm going to ask somebody is, what they're trying to achieve. You know, that's mostly, mostly a lot of people don't know what they want. You know, you, you, are you ready to, to dive into what, what social media really is about? Do you just know, some people say, oh, I'm just gonna put it out there, or I've got a cousin that does the job, you know? But there's people out here that we know the trends that we, are, that we have to, to stay on, you know? If we, don't, if we don't, then we're just putting, you know, throwing paper against the wall and hoping some of that stuff sticks. So that's my main question is knowing, do you know where you want to be in the next two years with your business? 
Because if you're a business and if you don't have a game plan, if you don't have a strategic plan for your business, there's a business plan, right, what they say? If you plan to, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So with a small business, it's, we don't have the, that luxury where we can actually um, make a mistake. Because a little bit of money that for a small business, $100, $2,000, whatever it is, it's still money that comes out of that pocket for a small person to put that money out. There has to be results. There's no, there's no mistakes. There's no, and that at all. You know, I'd like to say something about that because I, let me tell you. So I'm 56 years old and when I was 31, I ran for United States Congress. Oh yes, yes, I am 56. I'm like four years from 60. But let me, let me go historically. So I've been in Atlanta 37 years. I am a graduate of Spelman College. I majored in English. I came from West LA, California. My dad was in real estate. So the gentlemen who are putting together 365 influencers, it, it is wonderful because we've moved to a different time, heading towards the 21st century where social media is grand. People wake up at three o'clock, four o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, checking Facebook, checking Twitter, checking Instagram or whatever. So it's a great medium. You know, for me running for Congress, let me tell you, we didn't have the social media like we did, you know, in 1994 that we have in 2018. So it's very important. And so these gentlemen are talking about how to monetize it. But this gentleman talked about something really interesting, you know. And so I'm from the baby boomer generation. Are you from the baby boomer generation? How many of you in here are from the baby boomer generation? Come on, clap for the baby boomer generation. Come on, clap for the baby boomer generation. So, so very important. And what they say is that the baby, the baby boomer generation is at 80 million. The millennium generation is at 82 million. So they've driven the social media paradigm. But guess what? The baby, baby boomer generation has more money. And what they're saying is the baby boomer generation and the millenniums need to team together to figure out how to monetize, period, in the midst of the government shutdown. Am I happy about that? No. I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about people not having money coming in. But what I know that this is a really good time to figure out what is your gift? What is your gift? What is your hands good for? America is built on ideas. Ideas. Monetize your ideas. So many people have, I bet you everybody in this auditorium, and I'm going to call it an auditorium because it's huge in here. When I see everybody, like, we're maximizing at billions, right, as far as ideas. How do we take our ideas and monetize them in the social medium? Um, I do know that uh, and I'm, I'm a business consultant, and so my expertise is I'm a consultant for motels. And I'm a consultant for what people consider low-budget motels. I call them least expensive motels, right? And so I'm in the business of trying to figure out. So I, I used to have, when I was married, not married, happily single now, but anyway, I want to say. So, so it, um, I, I um, mowed lawns for Chevron gas stations, Dollar Generals, or whatever, because I have a gift with my hands. My dad was in real estate, so I went to the, the lumber store with him. I mean, just everything. I could mow lawn like no tomorrow. I could plan, because my grandmother was a planner, but I, I watched these things. So you can monetize everything on social media, but you can also publicize it uh, for a low budget on television, which you know um, the 365 influencers do. So they can tell you all these things. But let me tell you, we're not short of ideas. We're not short of ways to do things. There's way to, ways to do things through the back door to get into the front door. And it's a matter of a great work ethic. I don't know anything greater than a great work ethic. You don't put anything in, you don't get anything out. You don't put any money in, you don't get anything out. So, so it's, it's very important that you develop a business plan for your social media. You have a, a media plan. Um, I, I'm, to even go on to radio. Do you know some of the hip hop stations, you know what, to do one commercial might be only $5 or $10? Sometimes it's very inexpensive. Sometimes you can create a commercial, a radio commercial, for little or nothing. You could spend $30 for one radio commercial, and your friends will tell you, hey, I saw your commercial on radio. So there's so many ways to really do things to really maximize, and you start small, and I'll end here. My grandmother always told me, 
uh, because she was born in Pensacola, Florida, migrated to Omaha, Nebraska, moved to Go Rush, California, right? And I'm so thankful for her moving to California. You just don't know. Um, so it's very important. Sometimes you don't have to spend so much money and you budget small. You get with Kevin and the team and you build. It's so very important and then you monetize. Facebook, Instagram, but there's so much more. Uh, newspapers, you can write an article. You can write free articles in the newspaper because they're considered as, and I went to Spelman College, you consider it as opt-ed. You know, become a part of an editorial once you have a great stance, right? You have a great pro stance and being a business owner. In ending, business owners drive the country. I support the Indian community. Do you know what they own? Motels, cleaners, gas stations. The list, it wow. go, the list goes on. It is so amazing. And so I'm here to stand in the gap for them because the language barrier is, is so different. So can we merge with the Indian community? Can we merge with the Hispanic community? Can we merge with the black community? Can we merge with the Caucasian community? We are, shouldn't be just pro-black what whatever our ethnicity is. Business is all communities. And I will end there. There's so much that we can do together in maximizing product sales, Global Atlanta, you have the, the general councils from Peru and Germany right here in Atlanta. It is amazing in Atlanta why we're not catapulting to the roof because Peru, what are they doing? Exporting grapes, importing grapes. It, Georgia is known for their uh, pecans and their peanuts. So once you get into the research, and I will tell any business owner, do your proper research, right? And how to monetize and get with the experts for social media to really maximize. So President 2020, you say, what did you say? <laughs> you pointed out here as a question. Oh, okay. So, oh, <laughs> thank you. Quick question for Kevin. Kevin, in the space of this digital world and marketing, how are people able to scale economically when the time challenge is 400 different things that you're able, like you just mentioned, 400 different opportunities, and especially for startup entrepreneurs, what's the scalable concept for digital marketing? I'm gonna have to charge you for this one. Uh. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, but uh, seriously, when, you, when, we, when we start talking about scaling and we start talking about all this different stuff out here, the, the first thing that we have to do is we got to focus on one thing. We, we sit down with so many different business owners and I'm a singer, I'm a dancer, I'm an actor, I'm a, 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 a baker, I'm a, you know, I'm a, all these different things. You're not going to be great at all these different things. You got to do one thing. That's the best bartender back there in the United States. All right, he does one thing, you know? <laughs> We're the best digital marketers, trust me. Uh, we do one thing, we, di we do digital marketing. That's, that's the first thing, and then when we start talking about scaling, scaling is about partnering. It's about getting with people that are much larger than you, that have much larger audiences, that have uh, a larger engagement. And when we partner with these type of people, this is how we get the super growth that we see from a lot of different companies and a lot of different people. Because when I partner with somebody like a Jose Marquez, and he turns around and takes the Influencer 365 brand to all the people at Tech Latino and we bring the same thing back to this side. Now we've exponentially both grown our circles and this is how we scale. She made a statement about, you know, different cultures working together. So you're, you're, you say you split between two. So what, what's going on with that right now uh, from the standpoint of how can we merge you know, should we start marketing? You know, we, right now our digital marketing, we may be just marketing one way. I just purchased software that can take all my stuff and change the language of it. So I can start marketing differently. How is that going to affect a change in the marketplace? Well, That's good. well, if you think about it, the Hispanic market alone is something like $54 billion, right? Mm -hmm. So the, Ameri the African American is also up there. So that gives us more buying power. <clears throat> I don't know, I, don't, I hate to quote this, but um, there's a guy on TV, a paper, you know him, Al Pacino did a movie called Scarface. And what did he say to, to, uh, to um, Stephen Bauer? He said to him, first you get the money, 
then you get the power. You see? So what we have to do as a community, because brown and black communities have to come together because we are the majority. And as the majority, we need to start to take advantage of being the majority. Um, you know, Atlanta's a beautiful place. I came to Atlanta because I thought that, I think that Atlanta is going to be a major city. Um, right now, we're a second tier city. That's what the marketing people say. Well, well you only got a certain amount. We've got two million Hispanics in this town. And that's a lot, you know, where Georgia wasn't the place to be. You know, it was New York, it was Miami, it was Chicago, it was Los Angeles, Texas maybe, but Atlanta? Nah. So what happened is, is that now that this Latin uh, community is here, we need to welcome the Latino community into Atlanta because right now Atlanta suffers from one of the problems of, from the Jim Crow era. We still are segregated. We just don't know it. Or we don't, we are so you know, blinders on that we don't even pay attention that we're segregated. You know how many people are working at the Super Bowl that don't look like me? That's, to me, that's an issue. You know, so that's why I'm there. I don't necessarily want to be building stages, but guess what? If I know the skill set, I'm going to do it because if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. So, so they see me out there, somebody might see me in the stand and say, wow, look at him. He's Latino. Or maybe they won't know that I'm Latino, but it doesn't matter to me. They'll see that I am there, and by them seeing us, then we can be them. And that's what we need to start to think. How do we get into places where ne necessarily have been open to us in the past? So that whole thing about, you know, we suffer from self-segregation in Atlanta. Oh, the blacks won't go where the Latinos are, the Latinos won't go where the whites are, the whites won't go where the blacks are. And it's, it's it, hey, listen, it's no fun just to, I tell everybody in my, in my organization, when you're working in corporate America, do me a favor. Don't just hang out with the Latinos at the place. Don't just have lunch with them. You know what? Diversify your network. You need to diversify your network because if you don't, you never know what you're going to be missing. And you may not get nothing from just hanging out with us. So I believe that all of us have to become one, to in order for us to all get over. You know, we started a group out here called the Black Latino Council over 10 years. They've grown immensely. Um, and that was a, the Mayor Kasim Reed's idea. And, we've, and we ran with it, and we've got something like a thousand some members. And what we do is we bring in speakers. We bring in, we had, you know, Edward James Olmos has come in, and some of the great Latino actors and, and, and businessmen are coming to speak to both of us. And that's the message. The message is we need to come together because we got just too much money to not come together. You sound like you want that mic again, didn't you? Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make a couple qu uh, quick statements and then I have a question. The quick statements I want to make is that uh, ownership has to be at the at the top of this conversation. Yeah. Ownership, it starts with ownership. But it also has to have community education, right? A lot of things that you're talking about, our communities have been left out of that conversation for years. Um, then I, the last thing I'll say in terms of the points I wanna make before I ask my question is that Martin Luther King talked about economics, right? And we're in Atlanta where you have the largest conglomeration of black colleges and universities in the world. Yet we have a Super Bowl that is not including them. It's right across the street. You can, matter of fact, people are gonna park in our AU Center. Yet, that's the only, is that the only value, parking space? When all of the brilliant minds who have helped to, you know, establish what we talk about in, the, in, this, in this country. I just want to let you understand the level of education that the young people have nowadays is totally different than what people know. Two books I'd like for you all to check out. Where Do You Go From Here? Chaos of Community. Last book, Martin Luther King, before he wrote, before he died, or was killed at 39. He never saw 40. I'm 39. I'll be 40 Saturday. 
Thank you. The next book is called Black Mecca. Dr. Maurice Hobson, who's the racial equity professor at Georgia State University, is from Selma, Alabama. He talks about how the black elite did not allow for the resources to get to the lower class. The black elite of Atlanta, okay? Now, my question to you is, how do we, how do we trust our black leaders when, when I look and read the history, people say you young people are out of control, you don't know what you're doing, but when us young people read the books, we're saying, wait a minute, the finger, those four or five fingers should be pointing back at yourself. And the fact that my generation has been blamed for everything that has happened, yet I have not been allowed to lead and support. I mean, I'm not gonna give you my background now, but if you're interested, I'll tell you how many advisory boards I serve on and Georgia Tech stuff I do, the whole nine United Nations and all of that. Yet, I can't get any support over here across the street. And my whole focus is how can I unite the AU Center? How can we put focus there? That's prime real estate. It's across the street from a $2 billion entity that only breathes when it's entertainment. It only breathes when it's entertainment. I hope I don't have to repeat that. The most important thing is that you have to speak up. Yeah. You know, if it's not because you know I, I worked for a company at one time called Viacom. Y'all know it. Um, they had an MTV and they didn't want to give us the opportunity to work. You know, to have black artists or Hispanic artists. I forget about Hispanic artists. Just black artists in general. So, it's the same thing here. It's that nobody's being nobody's being um, vocal enough. You know, you have to go out and search for media. You have to be able to talk to people that will listen to you and understand. That's a big point. They're parking in our parking lot, but they're not having any of our kids going through. There's plenty of internships there. There's plenty of kids being, that are working with us on, on, the, on, the, on these, these floats because they're the only ones that can move them because we're too old for that, <laughs> you know? But we're, we're there to give them some mentoring advocacy, mentoring, education, that's what you have to do. You know, that's pretty much it. I mean, our community is stuck in a situation that it's a never ending cycle of poverty. It's a never ending cycle of jail. You know, and it's not because we don't have great kids. It's because everything is stacked against them. <clears throat> but if your mind is right, and you use it for, you know, to reach out to people and do, you know, that communication because the biggest problem that we have is that we don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And if we started talking to each other, we'd have a lot more, a lot more communication. But you're right, brother, you need to get together with people like them. They'll put you in the magazine, that, you know? And that brings to the topic of communication through digital media. Yes, okay, <laughs> all right, we gotta bring it back because what I like that happened, we brought up a, a condition or an issue, but how do we address it collectively? And it brings us back to this point, collectively and efficiently, and we can use digital media to do that. I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> I have an answer to that. Thank you, Mark Parham. You know, what I realized with the digital media, there's a lot of times where they're on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever, where we might see things that we might not like, right? But in the business world, we're to, you know, diffuse era. We're to diffuse era. So we're to show people what it means to, if everybody is talking, whether the, whatever their peanut gallery is, right? Hey, are you in business, right? I, I heard you just complain. Right? I heard you just complain like, no, tomorrow. Hey, let me introduce you to this, right? So a lot of times with digital media, we don't have to focus on what is the negative. We turn the negative into what is monetization? What is to, hey, do you have a business? Wow, you're so brilliant in your complaining. Man, let me show you what it means to monetize your genius. And I believe the communication, I was an English major at Spelman College, and let me tell you, I started out as pre-med, and one of the things I wanted to help people health-wise, but I realized that I'm doing all of that. 
but we have to be the thought leaders in digital media that produces the monetization on the social media because Facebook should not be the only, and Instagram and everybody else, the only one making money. Making money. 365 influencers ought to really do a memorandum of understanding right now with Facebook. And, and you know, uh, no, no, hey, hey, we keep on going. No, no, you're getting all of our information, our name, our address, and everything. No, all of our 365 influencers, whatever you have, no. Let me put together a memorandum of understanding that you cannot monetize off of them. Guess what? You're going to give us 1% off of everything the 365 influencers do. You know, you have to begin to broker the deals. And I'll tell you this, for me running from state senate, oh, clap for that. Come on. Come, you clap. You can clap. Come on. Hey, clap. Hey, clap. Act like you're at the Super Bowl. Come on. There's, there's, a, there's a gentleman um, who he has this picture up in the Georgia State Capitol. And I would implore you to, um, if you've never been to the Georgia State Capitol and just seen many of their exhibits on the floors, it's, it's amazing. So I live in Gwinnett County, but Button Gwinnett, he was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. He was a businessman. Do you know most of the Colonel Generals and, and the signers, of De they were businessmen. They, they, they had professions that were, that were amazing. So the digital area, you have to, to, to maximize in communication. If you hear something according to your profession that's wrong, d deliver them to the experts that can help elevate. I'll end here. So my daughter is 19, right? So she's a freshman at Georgia State University, and I had to tell her, look, you want to be a forensic doctor. You want to be a member of the FBI, CIA, or whatever. I said, guess what? You gotta go get your security license. These are the things that you have to do at a young age. Right now, she is working for the Super Bowl. A young, a, a, a woman who's an African-American woman who used to be a member of the FBI took her under her wings. Come on, clap for that. You have to have the network. So you took my daughter, beautiful everything, 99 percentile, this mathematics, but I told her you gotta present to everybody that you know that you're the 99 percentiles. You, so everybody in here is the 99 percentiles. We're not just, we are superior. So when my daughter told her in her interview, look, I'm a CEO. You know, I belong in your company, but I want to run it. And she's 19. So she is working for them. They gave her a security license. So we have to do everything by digital marketing to get everybody certified, to monetize, to get into the game. What I found out in running for US Congress when I was young at 31, walking around Capitol Hill, we were not even in the game of business. So I just want to go back to your point and we, we talk about how do we bring that to digital. Uh, one of the taglines that we use for the Atlanta Business Journal, we use it for Influencer 365, is influence your world. Sometimes we don't understand the power of social media. We really don't understand it. Some, sometimes we go in there, we use it to be our counselor, our therapist, it's the vent, but it's powerful. With one post, you can reach millions of people around the globe. And that's the power of this tool, is to influence your world. And how, can, and how can you most effectively influence your world no matter what you are doing? And if you're not using that platform to, reach, to help you reach your objectives, then why are you there? Then why are you there? So whatever you're pushing, whatever you, whatever you are, whatever you want to document, whatever you want to put out there, you, gotta, you put it out there. And the thing about it is that, yes, there are a lot of people on there, and it is becoming competitive to get the engagement. So put your money where your mouth is. Make sure you invest into it, and this is what we hear today, to understand how the best ways to really invest into digital to make sure that you can influence your world no matter what you are sharing. If you're doing real estate, if you're, if you're selling uh, Airbnbs, if you're trying to get the word out about something that you feel that is, in your eyes, not right or that should change, put your money where your mouth is. And so we have a tool, and the one tool that we're, we're using uh, is proximity marketing. And proximity marketing uh, is, has is been around for forever. You may know it as geofencing. But this allows you to pinpoint and target your message 
at a, at a very a high rate of engagement and conversion. Where you can put a pin wherever you are or wherever you want to be and uh, get a t in a 10 mile radius, have people see your message. And that's powerful because you get exactly who you want to see that message and get the conversion that you're looking for. Target the people that exactly that, you want, that you're looking for. You don't like what's going on in the Super Bowl? Guess what? Put that pin right there at, um, at Mercedes Benz and they have a 10 mile radius. They can see whatever you're doing, whatever you want to talk about. Everybody that comes within that radius will see your message. And that's the power of what we have today. Right. I happen to have someone, one of my coworkers here today that works with the Urban League, John. He uh, does a lot with the legislative and policies and stuff like that. So some of the issues that were brought up today need to be dealt with on a policy legislative level. So how do we, how do you think we should use digital media to affect that? I know for example, for like Barack Obama got, got to be president using digital media. Okay. Hey Mark, good evening everybody. How are John Moore with the Urban League? Thank you. All right. Um, but I, I want to answer, answer your question directly, but I also want to come back to this gentleman, and I'll start with you. You said something that sort of resonated with me. I think either the other gentleman talked about it's a mindset, right? It's a, everything, it's a concept. I get, it all started with one thought, right? And you have to sort of to do that and just sort of change your mindset of how we look at the world. There was an interesting article in, in the Wall Street Journal this week that said by next year, by 2020, China will, will become the number one power in the world in terms of its economy. Its economy is going to eclipse the United States. Next year, 2020, small article in the New York Times, blew my socks off because the world is changing, isn't it? And so what does that mean? As Mark would say, that's an opportunity for all of us, right? In terms of taking a look at international markets and, and digitizing, am I saying, in terms of our business, in terms of expanding our reach? Oh, sorry. Thank you, brother. I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Over 50, thank you. But the bottom line is, is that we have to sort of rethink the way, no, let me just step back. What the lady said was absolutely, I don't know your name, Madam Senator. Jackson. Senator Jackson, okay. She's right, she's right. Because we're, we're just not in that space in terms of, in terms of uh, commerce. We're just, we're really not there. And sometimes I talk to Mark, I mean, and you look at the stuff, whether, whether you look at TV or whatever, we're just not there, we think we're there but we're not in those places, so we have to get there. But once we're there, right, how do we use these instruments to get us where we are? And I have my own business, I think, you know, I, I, it's, I spent a lot of money on this website, and it's the same sort of optimization and, and all this other kind of stuff, and I'm taking, we have to take a, a, new, a, new, a new way, uh, approach of it doing it. But to answer Mark's uh, a question uh, directly about policy, it's all about policy. If you go to the Capitol tomorrow, because they're in session, I think, today and tomorrow, I was up there last week, you can walk around in every lobbyist. You don't see anybody that looks like you and me. I mean, literally, you can count us on one. Literally. And these are the people that are shaping policy. Right? They're writing checks. They're knocking on doors. They're going out to lunch. They're going to golf stuff. Am I right or wrong? So it's about changing policy to get more of us there. So for me, my little pet peeve this year, in terms of getting more of us into the game, um, Georgia is a $27 billion corporation. I think the budget is $27 billion for the state of Georgia. Fine. Give or take a billion dollars, fine. <laughs> Give or take a billion. But from us, in terms of the, the Urban League, in terms of our policy position, you don't have not one, min there's no minority business enterprise legislation in the state of Georgia, which means Georgia buys everything from pencils to peanuts to carpets, and you, you're not getting a piece of the action. Am I right? Could you not do business with the state of Georgia in some way? Right? Zero. Zero. So you want to talk about a pen? That's an issue for me of getting all of you guys on the stage, let's get together, and let's, well, I can't use the word, I'm in the work for not-for-profit, let's advocate for a minority women-owned business enterprise program that will give us, give you all the ability to get a piece of the action. In the end, you're taxpayers, are you not? It's your tax dollars, it's your money. And we know that by doing that, by creating more businesses, right, it'll, it's gonna expand the reach. So, use your mind, you're correct, we're not in the game, we have to, expand, we have to knock on those doors, and we have to open these businesses, and yet use the technology that you're talking about to expand the reach, because if we don't, they're coming to take our lunch. I'm an American, I love my country, true and true to the by and by, but the truth of the matter is that we live in a world that's changing, 
It's not, it's not, you can say whatever you want to say right now, it's a green thing. Because if it ain't the Chinese, it's the, it's the Koreans, and not in a pejorative way. If it's not them, it's the Vietnamese. Everybody wants to have the middle class life, and they're going to come take our lunch. Am I right or wrong? That's the truth. That's the God that is not anti anybody. So we have to make sure that our kids and this country is in a position so that we can continue to move forward, because at least in a capitalistic society. Thank you, my fellow Americans. I appreciate this time. John Moy for Congress. <laughs> But yeah, it, but it it goes back to, to to influencing your world though. It's it, it still goes back to that because the power of that because even even on that on that local level, like we still thinking, we still thinking small. This is we're talking about global. We're talking about global economy. We're talking about not competing. So what? You can't get it in Georgia. You can get it in South Carolina. You can get it in China. You can get it. You can get it wherever you want to be. And that's the power of this. So we can sit here and we can say what we're not getting, or we can say, this is how I'm going to use my platform to get what I want to get. So what are you going to do? Hi, everybody. My name is Shaw Nessa. It's like Vanessa with a Shaw. Hope you remember that. Um, I just kind of wanted to clarify something that Kevin said earlier. If that's okay. We, we family, right? Okay. So um, <laughs> I think um, it's important to, um, to focus on one thing um, when you start out, but I don't think that you should limit yourself to just one thing. It's okay to keep an open mind and possibly branch out because, I mean, look at Jimmy Fallon. He's an actor. He's a television host. He's a producer. He's a singer. Like, he does so many different things. And so you have to keep an open mind to get there. Uh, Jennifer Lopez, she started off as a dancer. She was a hardcore dancer for most of her life. And then she got the role for Selena, and she thought she loved at acting. And then when she got on stage to do a scene, she was like, I love to sing. This is what I want to do. So I think you, it's okay to keep an open mind to be multifaceted and, and have different things in your back pocket. So I just wanted to clarify that, you know, it's okay to focus on that one thing for a while, but also keep an open mind because you never know what can happen down the road if you keep an open mind. So I just wanted to say that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify that statement, uh, the, the, the biggest thing is this. Under digital marketing, we wear several hats. And everybody that you talked about, they're still in one field. They're doing entertainment. I went from being a dancer, I went to being an actor, I kept entertaining people. And this is what I'm talking about. It's, it's when people try to, um, when a lot of people are trying to get started and a lot of entrepreneurs get started, we all got these, these starry eyes, we got all these dreams and all these different things that we want to do. And, it, and it's beautiful and it's great. But we can't start everywhere all at the same time. We got to start with one thing. And once I get started, I got my bakery going. I'm putting cookies out on the street every day. You know, this is doing good for me. I'm making money at it. Now I can start to, I'm also enjoying this hobby over here. Let me see what I can do with that. But that, and that's the biggest thing. And that's, and that's what I meant by that statement. And just to clarify, if you're selling two things, you're selling nothing. I, I'm a digital marker, marketer and also cut hair. If I came to you and say you, you wanted me for one thing and said, you know what, I'm a digital marketer, I also can do hair too. Is that, is that, how's that, how's that, how you think about that? <laughs> I, was, I was just going to say, I think we have to be mindful of the fact that it's all about exposure, right? All of us, our first job is not what we're working now. Right, and so we have to say to young people, find out what your interest is, explore that. And by the way, that same interest is gonna lead to something else. Yes, we all, in this generation, and in our parents' generation, many of our parents and uncles and aunts are still working. They retire, and now they're back working. So I think most people, when they got their first jobs, it was about, I have to work because I need to pay bills. Now it's more about, you need to find your interest and your passion and align that and find an opportunity, right? Or go and serve somewhere because that way it'll lead to another place. Uh, two things I'd like to add up. February 6th, they're having the uh, tech, black techs, no, tech uh, down at the Capitol. Darshan Kendrick is hosting black techs on the Capitol, uh, February 6th. I'll be there. Um, 
And then it was, um, and it's something else I was going to say about another date. But I think just just keeping it, keeping in mind that it's all about the exploration and us having safe spaces. A lot of the young people I've run several hackathons when they first came to Georgia with General Assembly, Tech Square Labs, Old Hub, you know, um, Goody Hack. And when, when the young people win the hackathons, one of their biggest complaints is that you all promised to follow up with me. You all promised to mentor me. You all promised that okay, I'm not just giving you my ideas, but we're gonna actually do something. And nobody followed up. So I would challenge, I, I'm, I, would, I, I would just challenge us to not make false promises and be willing to be held accountable when you don't do right. A lot of people always want to make an excuse or run and blame someone else, but it's okay to say, hey, listen, I dropped the ball. People have to be able to know that you're a real person. And it's okay to make a mistake, but be accountable because we're asking people to do things that adults don't practice. Well, Kevin, <laughs> okay, it's probably only two people in this room that know what I do. Uh, this digital marketing thing is, uh, is pretty neat. Uh, I'm that guy that used to walk around with the yellow pages. Yeah. When, I, uh, when I started to work at P&G, I was 16 years old, and they taught me nothing but business and marketing. That's all I ever knew what to do. And I had to go out there and learn how to do some crazy things. I never knew about this phone. When we got computers, uh, we would get computers in pieces, and then we had to learn MS DOS to so how to compute, uh, how to set these computers up. Well, now you get it like this, so you really don't get a chance to learn nothing. You ain't learning nothing with this thing. It's uh, we call it the one-eyed monster. Uh, if anybody's in this room is an inventor, you need to invent something that's going to help people when they get old because everybody's neck is going to be down. That's the invention, but nobody's jumping on that. The other thing about this digital marketing thing is. Uh, I'm an investor. I invest a lot of money into a lot of high-end businesses, and I get to travel all over the world all the time. I just came in from China, and China doesn't have Facebook. They, have, they can't even get it. They can't get Twitter. So what we're talking about here is a domestic issue. We're not talking about an international issue. You've got 800 million Muslims out there that don't know anything about Facebook. So if you're going to get into this thing, one, one thing you got to do, I, I subscribe to, is you have to get in with people who are going to do what Influence 375 is doing. The other thing I always say to myself is, when you get all this, what are you going to do with it? Now that you've gotten out there and you talk to that 7.7 .7 billion people that's out there, what are you going to do? What product are you going to do? How are you going to service all these people? Well, the problem that we're missing in the Latino world and, and the and the Hispanic, the whole world, is that we don't have the financial capabilities of doing what we say we're going to do. Okay? I do investments. I do a lot of investments. I do very high-end investments. And the one thing I do meet is a lot of startup businesses. In my world, no disrespect, startup businesses do not exist. There's nothing I can do with a startup business. You're going to come to the table, you've got this dream, and you say, well, I've got the best thing since sliced bread, and I want you to invest in this best thing i got, and we're going to make a lot of money. And I'm going to say, go home. Click your feet three times and say, there's no place like home because nobody's going to invest in a startup business unless you bring some collateral, some revenue, or some assets to the table. That's just the way the world is right now. Since we've been sitting here talking, I figure there's about 22 people have become billionaires. The millionaire thing is gone. Because what they're doing, they're collaborating with digital marketing people They hit the world. Okay, Georgia is one of those places, like they were saying, that Georgia makes a lot of apples, grow a lot of apples and pecans. Who buys those? China. China buys them. You got 1.5 billion people that's upset because Georgia can't produce peanuts and apples right now. If I was in the market of farming, I would look at a bill that's out there like the farm bill. Do we know about that? No, we don't know. Some people do. Most of us don't. I was talking to my friends that came and did my roof today, some of my Latino friends, and he was a young guy. 
Alex. And I say, Alex, you can do a lot of business here. I said, do you know anything about the set-aside program? Well, see, the digital market doesn't tell you that. The only thing the digital market does is tell you how you're going to make money, but you don't disseminate this information. So we really don't talk to each other with this new weapon that's out there that y'all got. You really don't. You talk at each other, but you don't talk to each other. So what I do is I go, people call me up once in a while, they say, Ray, I need some investment money, and I'll say, what do you have? And they'll send me this scenario, and I'll say, you don't, you're not ready. But then what I do, I'll put them on some other end of my company, and I'll say, we'll get you ready. So you've got to take this new weapon that you have, and you've got to put some money behind it, and you've got to put a lot of structure behind it. My, my thing is, you need to joint venture with each other. This going out here doing this thing by yourself, you go get slayed. Amen. You go get slayed, I'm telling you. Is that the Jose know what I'm talking about? I understand your point. I understand your point totally. Um, you know, big investors don't get involved with smaller investments. See, but that's, the, that's been the biggest problem that we've had for many years. You know, we don't have the capital, right? So the only thing that we bring to the table is sweat equity. So when we do sweat equity, we're doing the job and we're not getting paid for it. Does it make sense? So a lot of companies like yours are, are great for those companies that are, you know, international, national, you know, even mid-sized companies. But a lot of small companies, they just don't have the money. Mm -hmm. The only thing, the only thing, the way everybody in this building here right now can start a brand new business and start making three to four thousand dollars a week. Everybody. Some people have seen that they don't have to go to financing. Financing the way it is, angel investment. Angel investment takes money from you. They want to be in your business. They want to tell you what to do with your business. I don't think I needed anybody. I started an organization from nothing, okay? I was working for, at that time, was my last corporate job was in 1997. And in 1997, I said, that's it. I'm not working for anybody else. Why? Because I've got something. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's about me being happy. Yeah. Because this life is too short for me not to be happy. So if I'm going to be watching some other guy that's giving me his money, and I'm giving me 40% of my company, when I'm a small business, guess what? I'm not going to do it. I've walked away from people who've wanted to invest. One guy, when I started the organization two years later, he says to me, I want to buy Tech Latino. So he's a big organization. Why does he want Tech Latino? It's because Tech Latino is a million-dollar brand that's kicking but all across the country. Because I'm not only in Atlanta, I'm in, I mean, you know me, I'm in Silicon Valley. And there's a lot of businesses out there in Silicon Valley that, that you can help. But the small business person, that entrepreneur, those people like these people that are here today, they can't work with, with invest heavy investors because their business is too small to fall into. But they can make a living, they can make you know, hey, listen, I've, I've got people in my team making 20 grand, 20 grand a week, okay? Making 20 grand, doing what we do. Uh, real quick, the, 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 the main thing I hear in all this conversation is about information. And it's about being able to have this information. And what we're doing here with the Atlanta Business Journal, uh, what we're doing with the Atlanta Business Journal is bringing that information to you. We're bringing communities and countries together. We are now uh, sharing information with over 23 countries globally, uh, from Taiwan to China to Europe. I mean, you name it, we're there. Uh, and the biggest thing is being able to provide this information about opportunities and economic advancement all over the regions of Atlanta. Regardless of what, what, what people might realize, Atlanta is a globally uh, recognized city, and everybody wants a piece of us. And with the Atlanta Business Journal, we are highlighting what's going on here. We're highlighting the opportunities, and we're highlighting the places where people, like the kids that you represent, can get that advancement. So what I would tell them is check out atlantabusinessjournal.com.
because they will see the opportunities that you're looking for and a lot of the opportunities that we, we have the mindset that we're shut out of. We're not really shut out. It's just some fact we don't know what's going on. So uh, it's about that time. Parking meters are going to start expiring in a minute. And trust me, they are more than happy to come give you a 30-something dollar ticket. Uh, so uh, we want to thank everybody for coming out on this very, very cold night. Uh, we apologize for all this stuff about the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, I couldn't, they wouldn't stop it for the, our event, unfortunately. But uh, we, we uh, thank everybody for coming out on this very, very cold night. I definitely, yes. And then, you know, let's see, we do plan on doing it once a month. But the, the issue also is we need a new, new location. So anybody that has space. show everybody a trick that we use. Um, when I do a lot of speaking, a lot of people come after and they say, hey, Jose, can I get your business card? Can I get your business card? Well, that's a good thing. But does anybody use LinkedIn here? How many people use LinkedIn? Okay. So, so why don't you all go to your phone? I use it every time I talk because I want to I wanna meet new people. I have a whole new group of people that I don't know here, and I want to make sure that I keep in touch with them. So go, go to your LinkedIn, right? See, I'm, I'm going to have, he, uh, we're going to have to have Mr. <laughs> All right, so if you go to your LinkedIn, LinkedIn just bought an application called Nearby. And if you go to your phone, to your actual contacts, I'm trying to get in there right now. No, not Gary. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's see what it is. Where you look? Mm -hmm. Actually, I got like 17,000 people, and they all think that I remember everybody's name. So, like, hey, how you doing, Joe? But it's not that. Right. We're going to do a webinar. What? You know yeah. what? Show everybody how to do it on LinkedIn. <laughs> I'm sorry, people, but I've been, I've been moved. Okay. But definitely, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Definitely, I want to thank Jose Marquez, uh, future senator and, and possibly president, Annette Davis Jackson, for stepping in and, and, and uh, being on our panel tonight. We want to make sure everybody, the, the new issue of the Atlanta Business Journal is out. It's the blue one on the table. It has Mr. V on the cover. Maybe some of y'all know Mr. V. Maybe some of y'all don't. But it's some great information in there. If you're in the restaurant business, you definitely want to uh, pick up a copy of this and read this man's story. He's got a great book coming out. Uh, also, uh, we always do some type of special offer for everybody that comes out. So tonight, we want to offer a free 15-minute consultation to everyone that's here. You can come sit down, speak with us, we can talk to you about your business and what you guys uh, are planning to do, and we can see how we can actually help you guys achieve that online. How's that sound? All right, thank everybody for coming out.